Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks tutorial video. Now today I'm really looking forward to sharing with you how to take a planning stage project and developing it on for the beginning of construction and building regulations drawings. So let's just jump into this project right now and I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for watching. Now I've recently been awarded planning for a nice little project for a bungalow rear extension conversion and I've also been commissioned to do the building regs and construction drawings. So I thought it'd be nice to share with you how that's done. So you can see a few of the drawings here. I'm just going to kind of scroll through a couple of these um, and then we'll kind of get on to how we get started on the project. So I'm just going to double click on to my site plan and you can see that even this drawing here is kind of generated from um, the 3D model essentially. And basically, you can see if I zoom in, all of this is a kind of rendered top view. Um, you can see the existing bungalow here, and you can see the new roof extensions here and here for the rear extension. Let's have a quick look at the elevations. Um, I'll go through to proposed elevations. I'll just double click onto that one. And you can see these are quite nice little rendered views. And basically, they're taken from the Vectorworks model. So 100% done in Renderworks. With a little bit of light and shadow and you know i can kind of produce this level of quality from vector it's all day long these aren't designed to be photorealistic but for planning purposes they're great i think the really nice thing about all of this workflow is all of these are updated as soon as i make any changes um, and i really like sort of developing the design and you know the beauty is all these viewports get updated as we go and you can kind of explore things like tricky junctions as well so it helps you actually kind of resolve part of the kind of modeling process okay good so we've done a little bit of an introduction you've seen kind of a few of the drawings that um, I managed to produce during the planning process and so I do tend to produce quite a few perspectives and lots of 3d material that kind of thing as well and the client finds that really helpful um, and I do think also the planners do too so we're going to get cracking um, how do we actually kind of get started on our model here and hopefully uh, we'll come back and you'll see the level of detail that these sections will develop fairly rapidly. So these are just sort of planning level sections um, and there's some nice little techniques um, I can talk about here to how to get this effect here. But let's go through back to my design layer. So I'm just going to navigate through back to my ground floor to begin with and let's put that into layer options and we'll just put it into active only just at this stage. So just give it a second while it goes back to the design layer. It takes a while to sort of pre-render, especially if it's in a 3D view. Let's give you a little spin around the model itself and see how that looks. So there we go. You can see the model itself without the contacts. So I've got that on another layer. So let's go down to our layer options. Let's go to active only. And that will strip away the roof and so on. You can see I do go for a fair bit of detail even at planning stage because I find it really helpful just in planning out the uh, furniture for the client. They can visualize you know, how their furniture is going to fit into the project. I also feel confident that the bedrooms and things like the bathrooms are the right size and everything's going to work nicely. So it's just a brilliant design tool. I absolutely love working this way. Okay, so to begin with, I'm going to go up to top plan. So the very first thing we're going to do um, with our top plan is basically adapt our walls. Okay, so I'm going to click onto this particular wall here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is find an appropriate wall to change this level of detail. So we're going to swap this one out. So the best thing to do is go to uh, our resource browser. Command R is the good shortcut. And over in my favorite files, you can see I've actually landed straight on the walls library. Now, if you followed my channel for a while, you'll know that I've developed a whole range of libraries for um, walls and slabs and roofs, things like construction hatches as well, and even some sort of 3D materials. And um, But actually, the walls library is the one I wanted to talk about probably most today. Um, so my Jerry walls library is adapted from some of the Vectorwit standards, but I've done a bit of editing and I've kind of simplified things like the classes within them a bit for my own purposes. And I do sell this library on my channel as well. So take a look at the website. Okay, so what we've got for this particular project, we've got some render on the outside, we've got block work, we've got insulation and block work. We've also got um, either plasterboard on dabs or just straightforward plasterboard. But let's just go for this wall type here. I'm going to right click and import. That's all we need to do to bring it into the drawing. So I'm going to also select uh, a couple more and I can hold the command key down to select a few intermediates. So I'm going to import, import this block work one 
and this sort of timber stud as a starter click import now one of the things i really recommend is developing a set of your own sort of wall libraries and slab libraries or you know maybe have a look at getting mine from the website as a starter whatever you do do develop your own sort of business libraries and um, because these really save you a lot of time when you're working on projects okay great so now i've got that into the drawing i'll select and i can replace this in one of two ways i'll just do this one to begin with so i can go to the object info palette I can go to style and I can go to replace. I could actually edit this type of wall, but I'm going to go to replace and you can see there it is selected. So then I click on my drop down menu. I can either replace from the library here or let's just go to the one where I've imported it already. And you can see these are the imported wall types in this particular file. Let's select the one I want, this JRA rendered, rendered wall and click OK. OK, now at this stage, this wall may be a little bit thicker than my planning wall. Okay, so I'm going to choose the most critical side. So the left side is normally the external face, particularly if you drew clockwise, which you always should. So I can see the external component there. So I'm going to go left side, left side, and that anchors that wall. So we'll click OK. And very rapidly, you can see that new level of detail has popped in. Um, I'll pop into 3D. You can see not really much change apart from you can kind of now see a bit of the construction going on there as well. So that's great. Okay, so let's kind of carry on that process. Um, so I'm going to select the other walls that are the new build walls. And let's just select this one and this one. I think this is going to be exactly the same. It's all going to be white render. Let's go for that one, that one, that one, and that one to begin with. Let's go for Command R. Let's do it a slightly different way this time. So I'll go to my open files. I'll select my wall types. And basically I can right click and apply. So that's another way that you can actually do the wall replacement directly from here. And I quite like that way because you get a nice big preview. So again, let's do left side, left side. If you do really want to, you can actually choose um, different elements within the wall. So things like the block work um, and you could go sort of the right side of the block work just to allow for the, you know, the back of the block work or whatever you want to do really. I'm just going to go for left side, left side. I also normally um, do things like replace the heights of the wall. Okay. And replace the classes and replace the textures. In fact, in, fact, in fact, I don't think I need to replace the heights on this one, so we'll leave that one. I'm not dealing with IFC data right now or Enegos, so I'll leave those and it will be a bit speedier to replace. So we'll kind of hide this uh, away, this resources palette. And you can see that's been quite a rapid way uh, to basically increase the depth, or should we say the, the detail in those walls. And you really notice that mainly when you're in top plan view. Let's switch to top plan. And you can see already it's kind of come on leaps and bounds. So this is a really nice technique for basically um, showing the different level of detail in the walls. And what you can actually do, which is kind of nice, is turn that on and off as required. So there's a really nice little button in Vectorworks we can do this with. And it's this one here. And it's basically called Auto Display Level of Detail. Now, if I click that, it basically grays the wall out. So if I wanted to, I could have at planning stage actually worked with the level of detail that I was going to use for construction. Personally, I prefer not to. Um, I actually feel that it's better to kind of like not have too much detail in the project early on. Also, I quite like the discipline of adding that when I get to the building reg stage. So it's up to you, but I, you know, do sometimes add that in um, at earlier stages and then sometimes turn off that level of detail there. Okay, that's good. Now, there's a few extra things we'll need to do. I can see things like this render needs to be returned here. Let's just focus on that for a moment. Um, and actually, in reality, we wouldn't have the uh, insulation, and the, the plaster dabs coming around there. So I'd probably need to stop this wall and actually take a slightly different type of construction through a bit later. But I just want to show you for a second the um, end component tool. So, the, sorry, the wall end cap tool, this one here. And this is on my building shell palette. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So what I can do is simply basically select the end cap and 
if I'm lucky, I can basically click and drag that end cap round to sort of return the plaster or the render rather. So I can do that any number of times. Um, so I can just do that again. It's going to bring that round to this inner skin here. And it's not quite the right detail because I've still got sort of plasterboard and dabs and so on. Now you will notice also that it did now extend the wall and that's fine. Um, it's not actually what I want, but it's basically a little setting. So I'm going to select my end cap and just tell it to extend or not extend in that situation. Okay, good. So that will go back to where it was before. Now, with the end caps, it's quite a nice little feature, this, is you can actually marquee select them. They're elements in their own right, end cap in wall. And if you just do the duplicate command, command D, that will kind of offset it ever so slightly. And then what we can do is basically just drag it across um, and actually drop it onto the end of the other wall. And the wall goes red, you can see it's quite easy to attach that on there. Now, this isn't quite right, as I've said before, but I'll sort that out later. Just wanted to kind of quickly show you the wall end cap tool. Okay, good. So um, what I need to do is bring my walls forward just so they're kind of in the uh, right space above those units and I'll need to ad adapt these sort of kitchen units because I think what happened was um, my actual internal walls got a little bit thicker than before. Good. Okay. So we've done a bit of work on the walls. We've got a few internal walls and things to sort out. Um, so we can do exactly the same process on some of those and it's really a case of just finding out where the new walls are and what's existing But all you need to do just one more time. Let's go here Go I can either go edit and actually edit the wall, but I can actually simply go replace And um, we're just going to have a stud wall in there. So just replace that with a stud wall So very very straightforward Okay, you get the idea Now the next thing that I'm going to do is take my slab um, so if I click onto this element here, this is actually a slab at the moment and basically you can see it probably hasn't got a lot of detail. Um, so if I do want to, I can go style replace and replace the slab. It's actually got some of the detail. I did put it in. <laughs> I told you I did sometimes for planning. But let's just show you how the process would work. I click on my um, options here, go to my slabs file, JRA slabs, choose the one I wanted, the closest sort of fit. Um, you can see we've got some sort of first floors in here, suspended floors and some sort of traditional, you know, timber floor, screed, bit of insulation. That's a pretty good one, actually. Let's go for this. Let's say we've got this kind of build up. I'm um, going to click OK. And basically when it replaces the slab, one thing that is quite important is you want to click edit and just make sure that this datum is still on the top. Okay, so if you treat your finished floor level as zero, which I am in this particular case, just make sure the datum is there. But you can actually change that datum to where you would like it, depending on where the zero point of the floor slab is. The reason I like that is because the furniture all sits up on top of the floor. Okay, so um, we'll just go ahead and replace that slab. I'll just show you how simple this is. So we'll click OK. Every time you kind of click OK and change, you just need to do the replacement and off we go okay good so i should have a bit more detail in my walls and a bit more detail in my slab so i think what i do is i'm just going to pop up to the first floor for a second okie dokie there we go and we just need to replace these walls up here as well um, so very quickly let's select those I'll be refining all the detail a bit later of these. I could use my wand tool actually. That would be another tool that I could use. Let's demonstrate that. So I'll do W for the wand tool. Before I actually use it, I'm just going to go into the settings. And I've got a little drop down here where I can go wall slab styles. And what's really nice is actually you've got a kind of pre-made uh, set of settings that you can recall. So we'll just do that one. Let's select similar walls. That will re recall that one. You can see I'm quite a big fan of saving settings in here. I've got quite a you know a bunch of those so that should with one click on those particular walls select them all and then we can go style replace let's go ahead and choose our new tool type of wall so the detailed one here for now we can always swap it again later if we decide to change i think that's pretty much the construction i'm going for and go for the left edge left edge so that the outside of the building isn't getting any larger because this particular thing is is quite tight this site Okay, let's take this floor slab here. 
Uh, let's go to replace, or should we so just have a look at edit, by the way? If we go to edit, you can see I've actually did it planning stage allow for, I think, some 240 uh, floor depth here and some sort of floor finish. So I'm pretty happy with that. I've got my ceiling, timber joists, to 200 for now. I might change those if the engineer says they need to be deeper. And I've got the timber sheeting there. Great. Excellent. So I think the only other element we need to, I don't need to uh, replace that, let's cancel. The only other element we need to work on, just to be able to kind of get this model worked up a little bit more, um, apart from the refined details and things like these partitions, is probably the roof layer. So have a quick look at the roof then. Okay, good. So I'll just whiz up to the roof and just let that re-render a second. Um, okay, so let's take this particular roof here, for example. So I'm just going to do this one face. Okay, so at the moment, if I click to edit that roof style, then I've got a feeling I've got to be a bit careful here because it might actually edit all of the roof styles. Okay, so I did use that for maybe some of those existing roofs. So let's just see. Okay, now this isn't a styled roof. It just says components at the moment. We can go replace. And again, if I had a pre-built roof that I was going to replace with, I can click and select that from my library. And um, you can see it immediately goes to the roof layer. It's kind of clever how it, you know, it obviously knows to go to my roofs, not my walls and my slabs. And then basically I can select the different types of build up in here and go ahead and replace them. Okay, so this is one way to do it. I've got all the build ups in here. Or the other thing that I can actually do, let's just escape that for a second is turn this into a styled roof and then edit it. Let's go for that approach as well. So I'm going to right click down at the bottom. I can do new roof style from unstyled roof. Okay, and let's just call this slate roof. Slate roof and click OK. Now, the real benefit of having a style is I can simply select all of these other new bits of roof, which are going to be the same style. I can replace them with my new slate roof. We can go in and edit that style. Now, if I had one that I pre-made earlier, I could replace it. Let's just go ahead and do some editing in here. Um, so we're gonna go in and let's just assume this is gonna be at least 225. Um, basically, let's add a new component here. So we'll just call this plasterboard. Doing this rather quickly. This can be the inner finish. Um, if I got time I can actually go through and put it into a class and I've just used the search facility there to put it into that existing class and basically let's give it some um, graphics by class all I really need to do is give it the thickness now let's just say 15 mil thickness and you can see here is the build up so this one here is obviously the insulation let's edit this one uh, Let's just give it a name. It does help a little bit, to be honest. By the way, you can right click if you spell that wrong. Let's call that insulation. And again, <clears throat> let's do insulation there as a search. Make attributes by class. That will give it its graphics there. And um, we've got like 200 at the moment. Maybe it'll be a bit more, a bit less. I'm not sure. So this is kind of taking us to that next little level of detail. We'll just do one more little component here. Um, and let's do this as battens. I'm not too bothered what function it is. It's kind of load bearing, I suppose. And let's say it's 50 mil. And let's just kind of not even worry about too much about the class. Good. Okay. So probably the slate is going to be a bit less thick than 50. Let's do that. So 25. So when I click OK, I still want to make sure that this is my datum, i.e. the top of the roof just so that this is the anchor point. So we'll click OK, and that should hopefully keep the roof in exactly the same position. Um, and basically, it depends actually, because at the moment I think I've got that as my datum. So I might need to swap it. And it'll take a second because it's replacing all the different components and the classes and various other elements as well. So that's looking good. Um, I have noticed that sometimes when this happens, Things like roof lights and things need to be kind of reset. Good, okay. So in order to reset those roof lights, click onto the roof face, just click on the blue dot there, and basically just click OK. Um, that should actually reset them to be relevant to the new height. 
and then we may need to just adjust the overall height. I'll just do this side here and hopefully you'll see that I've fixed that problem now. Yes. Okay, good. So I can easily go back and fix those other roof light issues a bit later. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go down to my plans now on the sheet layers and see how these are developing. So I'm going to go to my ground floor plan 1 to 50 scale. And previously, this didn't have that much detail in it as you saw from the earlier planning drawings. Now, when I go to the viewport now, um, what's going on? Well, of course, those classes didn't exist in the model at this particular time. So what I can now do is select this viewport and basically turn on the new classes that have been brought in by adding those new wall types. Let's click classes, go into our dialog, and here we can see all the classes, all these A classes, A for architect, and then all the uniclass sort of last word, internal wall, external wall. So I kind of use that semi uniclass type system. I can turn those on. I can also see uh, there's some other components in here, so I may as well turn these on as well. So these are all the extra detail, and here's some from the roof look coming in as well. That uh, looks kind of okay. Let's click OK for a second. Excellent. Okay, now, the detail's still not showing as I would like it, and that is simply because at the moment I'm on low or medium level detail. Okay, oh no, I'm actually on high detail, but if I do flick to low detail, by the way, that will basically turn off the wall detail and just kind of grey them out or, or black them out. There we go. Um, and that's kind of nice in the viewport. But the good thing is, you know, when I'm ready for my planning drawings, I can go to high level of detail. I personally don't try to put too much detail in at planning stage um, because I do find it can slow you down a little bit and you end up sort of worrying about details that aren't really an issue at planning stage. I quite like to add it as we go. Okay, so I'll need to kind of go through and just update my viewports, including the first floor one as well. And the same thing's going to apply to my section. So let's double click onto my section drawings and just have a quick look at these. Now, when I look into these sections, I would expect to see quite a bit of stuff missing to begin with, probably. Let's see. Okay, yeah, fine. So what I need to do is click onto uh, the section. Let's select this one. Let's just focus on this one actually so you can see the difference. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go to classes. And again, within that viewport, you can see there's a whole bunch of classes that weren't visible when I first created it. So I'm just going to turn on all these A for architect and all these component classes um, here as well. Things like this finish and the slate, all those things that I've added. Let's do that. I think that's everything I need. Let's click OK. Now that still isn't everything I need to do to the viewport. There's one other really important thing before I click update. And what we do here, we need to scroll down to the advanced properties dialog. So just before I click update, I'm going to go down to the bottom, go to advanced properties. And basically in here, there's a setting not only to do with things like the extents and the depth of the section, if we go to attributes, at the moment I'm on merge, so you're going to kind of get these walls kind of merging together. So to show the detail of the section, all I need to do is separate the cross sections, uh, use the attributes, merge structural objects with same fill and add a profile line. I'm going to click OK and let's click update. We've added a bit more detail to our section drawings. We've got the nice bit of detail in the slab build up and the walls and also the roof. There's a couple of things I'll probably fix a bit later here. I need to look at these junctions in a bit more detail, but we can you know, see we're well on the way to um, a lot more detail in our sections. And this is where we started from, from the kind of basic generic planning section. Um, and you can see the you know, nice level of detail compared to that original one. So just once again, if I want to kind of add this detail in here, all I need to do is basically click on it now. I'm gonna go to advanced properties, um, basically go to attributes, let's turn on uh, separate cross sections and turn these options on here rather than merging. We'll click OK and we will click the update button at the top of the object info to basically re-update the viewport and that will take a couple of moments to put that detail in. Excellent, so here we can see the two sections that I've got. 
Um, a lot of more detail from when I started. This is the existing roof, so actually that's not changing. Some of these are existing walls as well. Um, I've also got a really nice little key plan here, and uh, basically these section lines indicate exactly where the section's taken from. Now, to set that up, that's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is generate a small key plan uh, from a top plan view, for example. Find the name of the viewport. Okay, so to get the name of the viewport, you can simply select the name here, or you know, actually rename the viewport here. And all you need to do to annotate these section lines is basically click onto the section you're interested in, scroll down to Object Info, and go to the bottom to Section Line Instances. That'll open up a dialog, and then you simply go to Viewports, and basically tick Key Plan so that that displays here and you can see AABB displaying. So a really nice little tip and then if you were to move that section at any time, let's say I moved it through to a different spot, this actual section would update. So you've got this really nice coordination. Fantastic guys, so I think that's everything I need to show you for this first video. Uh, we'll be coming back and looking at adding a bit more detail, things like gutters and roof, part, roof down lights, even some actual construction details a bit later. But really I hope you've enjoyed that so far. It's just really showing you how you can very rapidly add uh, more detail to your walls, to your slabs and to your roofs to get basically a lot more detail into your drawings very rapidly. So it does take a bit longer to do all the actual sort of fiddly details and construction details. We'll talk about that in the next video. Um, thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye bye.